I pray to speak and be heard in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Today, I haven't picked the gospel reading for the sermon. I've actually picked the first reading, which was from Acts. I couldn't quite make up my mind whether I was going to call the sermon boldly building or consumed in the spirit. But let me explain the story and you can help me with the dilemma. Today's reading starts with Peter and John being confronted by the peace and the captain of the temple guard. These were powerful people. In fact, these were the very same people that initiated Jesus' arrest and his resulting torture and crucifixion. But in order to understand the story about Peter and John a little better, we need to rewind to a bit earlier in the book of Acts. The book of Acts tells the story of the adventures of the apostles after Jesus had ascended into heaven and the Holy Spirit had come and filled all the believers who met together. Scripture tells us, suddenly there was a sound from heaven like a roaring of a mighty windstorm. Then what looked like flames of tart fire appeared and settled on each of them. Everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit. It's interesting to note that this was witnessed by many people. And if you recall, after the incident, the disciples were now speaking such that people from many lands could understand them in their own language. While I was looking at the text, I counted 15 different people groups. Anyway, I digress just a little. This infilling of the Holy Spirit had a dramatic effect on Peter. He stepped forward and he shouted to the crowd, listen carefully. And he proceeded to tell them about the prophecies in the Old Testament that spoke of the coming Messiah and how Jesus had fulfilled all these prophecies. And moreover, for the need to repent, be baptised and receive forgiveness. Peter also loudly pointed out that Jesus was the very same man that they had had crucified. Now, you can imagine this incredible sign, the tongues of fire, the wind, etc., and Peter's loud and challenging speech ruffled a few feathers right there and then. But what started to cause a lot of aggravation amongst the hoi polloi was the number of people who came to believe Jesus is the Lord and Saviour. Now, it was only a few days after that, with the number of new followers increasing daily, that Peter and John healed a crippled beggar on their way to the temple for the afternoon service. The crippled beggar asked Peter and John for some money, but Peter looked at him intently, the Bible says, told him, I don't have any money, but what I do have, I give you. Peter held out his hand and said, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, get up and walk. The crippled beggar jumped up and started walking and leaping and praising God. Now, as I said, Peter had already ruffled a few feathers, and now here he was performing a miracle right outside the temple in plain sight of a great many people. 
And of course, no one was going to keep quiet about witnessing something so miraculous happening. So Peter seized the opportunity again and addressed the crowd, asking, why are you surprised? What he actually said was, why stare at us as though we made this man walk by our own power? For it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of all our ancestors, who has brought glory to his son, Jesus, by doing this. It is faith in his name that healed this man before your very eyes. Well, it's roughly at this point uh, where today's reading in Acts begins. And Peter and John are confronted by some very annoyed people with a big axe to grind and their power to cause the apostles a whole lot of trouble. Well, I just want to pause here and go back a few weeks to Maundy Thursday, the night that Jesus is arrested in the garden. At this point, Peter can't stay awake. Then he becomes panicked and fearful when Jesus is arrested and he trails behind at what he hopes is a safe distance as Jesus is taken away. Then on Good Friday, Peter denies that he even knows Jesus, not once, not twice, but three times. Then on Easter Sunday, Peter and the other disciples, save Thomas, are hiding in a locked room, not knowing quite what they're going to do. Even some days after Easter Sunday, when Peter has seen the risen Lord, he just goes back to fishing for a living. So the question is, what was the difference between Peter in today's reading and the Peter in the Easter season? What happened to Peter that would make him be bold and brave and caught trouble for himself in Jesus' name? It was the Holy Spirit. Peter was now quite possibly on fire for God. He was totally sold out. And according to Acts, 5,000 other people now believed too. Peter was no more woe is me, he's wow is me. And he doesn't care who knows it. The priests, Sadducees and temple God who now confront him have the power to have him crucified too. But Peter is not going to let that stop him. He is consumed by his love for God and he's not afraid to tell anyone, anyone who will listen. Peter is boldly, loudly, brazenly building the church of new believers. But let's go back to today's reading. Peter and John are confronted, arrested and thrown in jail. The next morning, when they've had time to see sense, the authorities are hoping, they will be quietly on their way, too afraid to say anything to anyone about Jesus. But no, Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, boldly declares, let me clearly state to all of you and to all the people of Israel that the crippled beggar was healed by the powerful name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, the man you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. Peter isn't pulling any punches. He tells it like it is, risking his very life to do so. He then goes on to say, Jesus is the only way to salvation. I mean, this was really provocative stuff. And frankly, the Bible tells us, the religious council were amazed at Peter's boldness. They could see there was something different at work in him. 
They didn't know how they were going to keep a lid on Peter or the growth of Christ followers. Truthfully, I think the council thought that once Jesus was dead, Christianity would fade from people's memories and wither away. The council decided they would further threaten Peter and John and demanded they never spoke of Jesus again. But Peter and John replied they couldn't stop telling people about Jesus. All the things that he had done, all the things that they had seen and heard, and they'd even dared to add, whom should they obey? God or the council? They really were asking for trouble but they trusted that God was the highest authority. They believed God is to be first and foremost. They took to heart, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength. And moreover, they wanted to. They couldn't help themselves despite the risk. So now that I've explained the story, Do you think the sermon should be called boldly building or consumed in the spirit? But the burning question is this. If we're empowered by that same Holy Spirit, what can we boldly do? Amen.